Well, good morning and welcome to Coffee with the Pastor. We're looking at Jesus' disciples this week. And we're talking about how Jesus dealt, dealt with different types of people. Uh, people who disagreed with him vehemently. And some, uh, if he wouldn't agree with them, just thought he was horrible. But one of the groups I wanted to, to take a strong look at during this series of Grace and Space is his disciples. A pretty varied group of guys and uh, how Jesus interacts with them I think gives us some very great insight into how we could interact with people in our lives uh, but I'm going through the list of them it's mark 3 uh, and today I'd like to look at Matthew Thomas and James son of Alphaeus uh, start with Matthew he was a text collector we, we talked about him last week as, as someone who would have been uh, very different from Jesus and all and different from, from the ones who, who Jesus was uh, ministering to a lot. Uh, tax collectors in the days of Rome would buy a tax franchise. And they would have tax booths and they would tax the folks for Rome. And they uh, Rome was known for their high taxes. Uh, they taxed their conquered areas, their areas where they occupied, um, and they would tax them enough just so where they wouldn't have to tax their citizens who lived in Rome. And this angered the, the, the Jews, and they didn't like paying the taxes, and they certainly didn't like some of their own countrymen collecting taxes from them, and then also padding their own pocketbooks, because they were getting rich doing it. So they were hated, and so Matthew was, was hated, and, uh, and yet, he was intrigued, obviously, with Jesus' teachings. He had watched him. And Jesus literally called him one day when he was at his tax booth. And the Bible talks about how Matthew just got up from his tax booth and followed Jesus. Left that behind, followed Jesus. And then, of course, we know Matthew uh, also penned the uh, book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, the uh, very valuable thing that we have to... to listen to the teachings of Jesus and the, and the life of Jesus and a very powerful book. And, and so we're grateful for Matthew. Uh, the next one that's on the list is Thomas. We all know him as Doubting Thomas. And the reason is every time we see Thomas, if he's doubting or being very pessimistic. Uh, the first time we see him is when uh, Jesus... Uh, has told his disciples that they're going to go back to Bethany where his friend Lazarus is. And he, he says, Lazarus is, is sick and he's asleep and I need to go wake him. They didn't realize he had died and he wants to go back. The disciples do not want to go back uh, because they know that the religious leaders in Jerusalem cannot stand Jesus and they don't want him there. They, they, they're trying to figure out how to kill him and they know that. Bethany's real close to Jerusalem, so they would know whether he's back if that happens. And uh, Thomas' response is, okay, and Jesus just said, no, we're going to go back. And so he starts going, Thomas said, well, we might as well go and die with him. That was his response. And so that's one of the first times we see Thomas. Another time we see Thomas is in John 14. Uh, Jesus is teaching his disciples that uh, he's going to go away but they're not to worry and that he's going to provide a place for them. And it's that great passage where in John 14 where it says, let not your hearts be worried. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms or many mansions, depending on which version you read. And he says, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come and get you and you will know the way. And Thomas looks at Jesus and he goes, Jesus, we have no clue about how what you're talking about. or We don't know the way. And then Jesus answers back with that great thing, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. I appreciate Thomas because he was probably asking a question and all of them were thinking. How do we know the way? Well, they hadn't gotten it yet. They'd been with Jesus for three years, hadn't gotten it. Jesus is the way to heaven. And... Uh, Without Thomas, with his pessimistic, inquisitive mind, 
we wouldn't know. Uh, we wouldn't have that great passage that we lean on, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to Father except through me. Then there's another time in Thomas that you know, that after the resurrection, and Jesus has appeared to the disciples, but Thomas wasn't with them. And so they're telling Thomas about Jesus appearing, and Thomas says, I'm not believing it until I can put my hands in his nail-scarred hands. I stick my fingers in there. And uh, suddenly Jesus appears and says, come here, Thomas. And he holds out his hand and tells him to stick it in there. And of course, Thomas then believes and, and uh, uh, is also martyred later, according to church tradition. The last one is James of Alphaeus. We don't really know a lot about James. Let me tell you what we know about James. We know that he's the son of Alphaeus, and we know he's the son of Mary, because Mary was, his mother was one of the women who was at the cross that was going to prepare the spices with the other Marys and all, but we really don't know about James. James of Alphaeus, he must have been just a quiet guy who was there, who hung around, who, who, who did things, but there's other James was in the Bible, uh, the other disciples James, James and John, brother John, and he was very powerful and, and made a lot of things. And then, then, of course, he was the first martyr, really, uh, outside of Stephen, um, the first of the disciples to be killed. And uh, there's James, the half-brother of Jesus, which he wrote the letter of J James, and he was the head of the church in Jerusalem. But this James, we don't know a lot about. But it's those kind of folks that I appreciate, uh, those folks that are very much a part of things, part of the church or part of the group, part of whatever. They don't make a lot of noise. They don't call attention to themselves, but they're there supporting. And we need those kind of folks as well. So that's three more. Tomorrow we'll finish up uh, the disciples. We'll get to look at Judas Iscariot, the one who, uh, who betrayed Jesus. And, and uh, we'll look at Simon the Zealot. And, uh, and so we'll look at some of those tomorrow. I hope today you have a blessed day, and, uh, and I hope you can tune in tomorrow. Thanks, and we'll see you later. Bye now.